This week's parsha is Parshat Bechukotai. It famously contains the Tochacha, the rebuke by God of the Jewish people if we do not follow the Torah. But before that, we have um, the brachas that will uh, that will be rained upon the Jewish people if we do keep the Torah. So that's what we're going to be focusing on this year. And these ideas are based on uh, Divrei Torah shared by Rav Bernstein in his weekly Meshach Chachma um, essays. This is from this year, literally produced probably last week, maybe yesterday. And it says as follows. The beginning of Parshat Bechukotai, chapter 26, verse 3. So, in Bechukotai te'lechu ve'tnutotai tishmeru v'asitam otam, v'natati kishmechem ve'itam, v'natna aretz yevula v'ta sede iten piriyo. Right, if you will follow my decrees and observe my commandments and perform them, then I will provide your rains in their time, and the land will give its produce, and the tree of the field will give its fruit. And Rav Bernstein points out that what's so interesting about this, this psokim is that you would think that if we're gonna, if the Jewish people fulfill the mitzvahs, then we'll get all these open miracles, and that's how God will reward us. But rather, that's not what's happening. God is saying that if we keep the mitzvahs, then He'll shower blessing on the Jewish people within the bounds of nature. That's His preferred method of, intera- uh, method of interaction with the world, and that's very interesting because we see that clearly from the psukim. Fulfill the mitzvahs, then you'll get rain, and the land will give its produce. That's amazing. Now. Oh, another corollary of this of this concept is the recon- crucial recognition that the laws of nature are not programmed in advance to produce a set amount depending on natural input alone. Instead, they're constantly being governed by divine supervision in response to the spiritual level of the Jewish people, right? And that's how Hashem decides how much bracha to send on them. There's actually a midrash that mentions that Shimon ben Sheta, who is a uh, what's it called? Uh, his generation was exceedingly righteous. The rains would regularly fall on a Friday night. Now, the reason why they're so noteworthy is because Friday night was actually a time when most people are at home. They're not traveling around. So if rains are falling, but it's not inconveniencing anybody, then all you get is the pure bracha. It's not an inconvenience. It's not bothering anyone. But you're still getting the full benefit of that. And as a result, we see that that's, and that comes through the fact that that generation was extremely righteous. But it came through natural means, through the confines of nature. Now, sometimes... The recognition that God is the one who's, who, that the laws of nature are there mandated mandated and ordained by God are sometimes obscured. And therefore, God will sometimes send a miracle just to remind us who really controls nature. Fine. Now, this is a, this is where we see the Mishra Chochmah's concept. Now, this idea will um, illuminate for us two statements of Chazal um, regarding the different forms of praising Hashem. So in one place, the Gemara states that whoever says Ashra every day is guaranteed a place in the world to come. In another place, the Gemara states that a person who says Halal Hagadol, right, that's chapter, that's Tehillim chapter 136, if he says Halal Hagadol every day, then he's considered a blasphemer. Now, why? Those are two different uh, sections of Tehillim that, that praise God. So why, why does the, the Gemara have such opposite reactions to people who do this? So the Mishnah Chachma explains as follows. Hal Hagadol praises HaKadosh Baruch Hu for the open miracles which he has performed. Right? Like splitting the sea or killing the Egyptian firstborn, something like that. Now, if we were to say Hal Hagadol every single day, then we're saying the only reason why we would praise God is for the fact that he created, that he's, uh, that he's the one behind the miracles, but not necessarily that he's behind the regular laws of nature. Now that is objectionable, and that's why that person is considered a blasphemer, because that is blasphemy to say that God is not behind the laws of nature. In contrast, the Gemara notes that Ashrei has two particularly unique qualities. That is to say, it follows the order of the alphabet. In that way, it's very it's sequential. Moreover, it also contains the puzzle of You open your hand and satisfy the di- desire of every living thing. Now, the Meshach Hachma explains that it is specifically the combination of these two things which make the daily recitation of Asher so praiseworthy. Why is that? Because the, the following the order of the alphabet means that there's a certain natural order to the world that the world follows. And if we notice that, that the, that the fact that there is an ordered step and process and that there are cycles to the world, that it is specifically through these processes that Hashem opens His hand and satisfies the desire of every living thing. And that's the concept being locked in. What we want to point, point to is the fact that specifically through these natural processes, that's how God wishes to, to shower up rain and bracha upon us all, 
that is the idea we'll leave you with. Um, Shabbat Shalom.